Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to show you how to create cutout designs using basic shapes, the pen tool, the note tool, power strokes, and Boolean operations, union difference and intersection. Let's start with a square for the background. This is the lowest layer of my stack. I give it the darkest color and add a lighter color on top. This will be the second layer and the third layer is even lighter. I cut one circle out of another circle to create the moon shape using pass difference. Sometimes the difference does not work with multiple objects. So in this case, one circle got cut out. The logic probably is right. My use was wrong. Instead, I combined them first and then cut them out of the moon shape and it works just fine. I use the circle tool to add a few circles for a cloud shape that covers the whole width of my design. I combine those and then duplicate the background and combine it with the cloud via intersect. Normally I would use clips or masks to trim the clouds to the size of the background, but here I need the shapes to be cut later on to exactly that size. I need the shapes to be eight shapes that I can combine via Boolean and B have the right size and C connect to each other. The glow of the moon connects to the clouds so it's not a free floating shape that will drop off the rest once they are cut. All objects in one layer should be connected. An easy way to do that is via the frames I just added. I make sure the stars connect to the frame the glow of the moon and the clouds connect to that. I create a slightly thinner frame for the second layer, again using the background to make sure that I have the right size, duplicate that, combine the two via the pass difference, give it the lighter color and duplicate that for the top layer, which will be the white one. It is just a nice visual if the layers don't have the same size and you don't have a straight edge, but a stack of visible layers. In order to avoid the moon from being free floating, I add a line to connect it. I quite like the look, so let's do the same with the stars. I can detach that star from the cloud. Maybe an additional layer on the moon would look nice, so I duplicate the moon use the pass inset a few times to create a smaller shape. I cut off the excess shape at the right tip with the note tool and connect it to the cloud below with a simple ladder made of rectangles. As per usual, I should have put some thought into the structure before jumping into the design. I have four layers. Each of those should be on a separate layer. I select all the white parts, cut them and copy them into the top layer. Take the next color and repeat the process to have each color in its own layer. Before I do the next step, I save the file with a new file name. Because once I combine, it is near impossible to detach elements that overlap. The new file is just version 2 and I combine each layer with pass union. Each layer now just has one pass where it was multiple shapes prior. I mentioned prior that all shapes need to be path closed shapes, otherwise the boolean operations union and difference won't work. 
They don't work on lines or groups or bitmaps. When using strokes, convert the stroke to a pass and it'll work just fine. I added some color to the bottom layers and add a drop shadow just for visuals for this video. If you want to cut them, of course, you don't add the shadow, but here it looks nice and shows the layers being stacked. When I take this and split the layers, you can see those four layers with one pass each that contains the whole design. Let's do a second design, this time working off a circle. I duplicate it twice, scale it down a little bit to create the first frame. As a result, I have a circle as a background and the ring on top. This time I want to work from the highest layer down. I use the pen tool to create a little bit of a rock face on either side. I did speed this part up because I'm just drawing straight lines and then using the node tool to curve them. For the vegetation I use one of my favorite tools, the Pass Effect Power Stroke. It allows me to adjust the widths of the stroke along its path. If you have not worked with the Power Stroke, have a look at my basics video I recorded earlier. For now, I'm just adding simple leaf shapes. The pass effect adds additional control nodes that I can easily manipulate with the node tool. A simpler approach works better. There we go. I duplicate that. I can adjust the widths inside the pass effects panel. I add some circles as decoration, duplicate the two circles and spread them along the different plants. With the first layer completed, it's time to organize. This time I'm gonna work with five layers. I move all the elements of this one to the top layer and lock the layer. That way I avoid accidentally changing or even just selecting elements in that layer. I switch to the layer below, use the pen tool and create the silhouette of rocks slightly larger than the ones above and give them a slightly darker color than the previous level. Before starting to add fish, I use circles, convert them to paths and deform the nodes to create basic fish shapes. The fin also works as the top and bottom fin. I add a simple circle as the eye and combine that with the body via the pass difference so it is cut out while the rest of the shapes are added via the pass union. I duplicate the fish, scale it slightly, variation is key. It makes your design look less repetitive. I add a frame to this layer as well by duplicating the background, scaling it, combining the two circles via the pass subtract. On top of that, I'll add some bubbles. This time not working with two circles, but with one circle and a stroke instead of a fill. So I set it to no fill, set a wider stroke and pick the stroke color. Just like in the first design, I connect all the elements to avoid having parts float loosely. In order to combine them later, I will convert all the strokes to pass. I go pass, stroke to pass. 
now the circles with a stroke turned into rings. I move on to the next layer after locking this one, starting with some rocks in the background, again making sure they are visible behind the previous layers. I give them a slightly darker color again and add another type of fish. I use the same approach with two ellipses converted to pass and modified with the note tool. I combine the two parts of the fish via pass union and start duplicating, slightly scaling the fish and making sure that I place it in a way that it connects to either the rocks or other fish. It helps to keep an eye on your layers. I accidentally place these on the bottom layer. I cut them and paste them into the right position and add the frame for this layer, making the ring slightly wider each time. I lock layer 3 and move on to layer 2, this time using the pen tool, choosing a darker color still and adding a simple shipwreck. I add the frame to this layer and add a few more bubbles on top. Don't do what I do, save your document early and save it often. I worked all this way, nearly finishing the design without saving my document. Now that pretty much everything is done, the document is saved, I add a few more little details and then save it again creating a new version to make sure that when I combine everything it will be saved in a new file. I start by converting the plant shapes that are the power strokes. Once I turn the objects to paths I can combine them with the lighter circles and then take the darker circles and subtract them using the pass difference. As you can see it is a little fiddly because I did not organize my layers properly. I could have done that right from the start but luckily the other layers were a lot quicker and it was a straightforward pass union to combine those. Here we are all layers are just one curve. I can add the drop shadow and as you can see there are some parts where the union left gaps. I just delete them with the note tool. I can still make adjustments if I want to or add more shapes or even more layers on top. This is the design split into its five layers. Those would be separately cut out and then placed on top of each other. If you work with expensive materials, you might want to use the empty spaces and add more shapes into them before cutting them out, either to use in the same design and place on top or use for different designs. As usual, this is just a glimpse of what can be done. Play around with it, have fun, use basic shapes, the pen tool, the note tool, power strokes and get to know the boolean operations. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification button, leave a like and I will see you again soon.